Hello and welcome to this ArcherPoint presentation on Business Central Workflows Standard versus Power Automate. My name is Alex Wiley. I'm a senior pre-sales consultant here at ArcherPoint and I'm going to be leading you through this demonstration today. Before we get started, I want to quickly talk about what we're going to be covering. The first thing is I'm not going to be doing a step-by-step -step detailed guide on setting up a standard workflow in Business Central because there's already quite a bit of information out there from Microsoft on that already. I am going to review what the setups look like in comparison so you can see a standard workflow setup in Business Central versus what Power Automate requires. And then we're going to walk through a full setup of a Power Automate workflow. And then we're going to finish by doing some tips and common requests that people ask for when setting up workflows in Power Automate. So the first thing that we want to look at is what the setup is required. The Usually you are creating a workflow from a template and that can be done either within Business Central or within Power Automate. The workflows are almost exactly the same. All of the templates that are available in Business Central are available in Power Automate with the exception of some integration workflows that are specific to inside of Business Central. The next thing is when you're setting up a standard workflow, you're assigning a condition and a response. So in this example of vendor approval, uh, when an approval is requested, you can set that to only be if the vendor belongs to a certain type of category or uh, if there's other criteria that you want, then you can modify your responses. And the responses include, should that go to one person? Should that go to a group? In Power Automate, all of those are handled in the Power Automate side. The second one is you create the approvers, chains, and limits. So if you're using standard or Power Automate workflows, you still use this approval user setup. And so Power Automate will go and look at what this chain is, just like the standard workflow. So in this case, uh, you know, Kelly is reporting to Molly's reporting to Kelly and Kelly's reporting to the admin and then these limits are in effect. So you only need to request approval if your sales amount for sales documents are above these amounts for those users. In the standard setup only, you have to go into the users and set up the workflow notification option. So if you want it to use email, you have to define that email here and Additionally, if you are setting up the standard workflow within Business Central, you have to set up an email account and you have to set up and turn on your job queue entries and run that job queue so the email notifications go out. So some pros and cons between those two different setups. Really, the, the only pro that I'm aware of with the standard workflow with Business Central is that you can use the approval tile. You can have this on your uh, role center and as requests come in and after you're sending approvals out, you can see how many outstanding sent and how many requests that you have to approve all within that uh, dashboard. The cons are you can only have a single condition type. So that screen that we looked at earlier, when a vendor request is approved, if we want to set this here to say, uh, you know, only vendors that are from the East region go to Sandra for approval and vendors from the West region go to Bob for approval, you can't do that because you can only have one condition and you can only have one uh, type of workflow for vendor approval requests at one time in Business Central. However, with Power Automate, you can have multiple and you can send different types of records based on different criteria to different people in different groups. There's less integration options with the standard workflow. Uh, you don't have as many actions or notification options. You can modify the Power Automate workflows to send messages through Teams. You can uh, you know, integrate other areas. You can create records, which we'll look at, uh, or insert, modify records based on responses. And I put job queue as a con, and that's only if you're not using it today. If you're already using the job queue, setting up an additional job and managing that is not a big deal. But if you're not using the job queue, setting it up only for managing this email notification internally could be a kind of a headache because you're not familiar with using it. Now you have a whole new thing that you have to uh, administer. So we're going to jump into the Power Automate workflows. 
as I mentioned, the templates already exist in Power Automate, and we have the benefits of the email being managed, the workflows are the same type, you can have multiples, um, and our full ecosystem integration. So let's go ahead and jump in. Oh, I do have one note here. If you do set up a Power Automate workflow and a Business Central workflow at the same time, and they're both enabled, the Power Automate workflow is going to override the Business Central workflow. So that's just something to be aware of if you're setting this up and testing it and something uh, seems wonky, just keep in mind if you have two enabled workflows, the Power Automate one will supersede. So let's go ahead and jump into our workflows. So here we can see our workflows in Cronus and I want to set up a new customer approval workflow. So I can go to Power Automate, say create, go to my templates over here on the right hand side and business central customer. And now we have request approval for business central customer. So I'm gonna click this. It's gonna load my services and you'll see it uh, approving and getting the authorization for my related Microsoft services. You might have to click in here and authenticate if it doesn't automatically load those up. And that's unique for whichever Power Automate service you're using, depending on which different Microsoft accounts you're working with. And so the first thing that we want to look at is here's our record. So these are my business central Power Automate areas. We have to define our environment and our company name before our conditions work. So if I clear this out right now, it doesn't know what to pull because I haven't given it my company parameter. Now, when I come in and select the company, now it can pull these values because it knows what the customer record looks like in that environment. And, you know, this can be anything from credit limits to, as I mentioned before, if you wanted to have different responsibility centers and different types of customers going to different people, you could set those conditions here. I'm just gonna start off and leave this blank. So we just have a simple one. And the next, we continue to define our companies. And for our APIs, we're using workflow endpoints. We can put in the email of who we want this to go to. I'm in my demonstration environment, so I'm using the admin administrator. And now we have our conditions. If it is approved, then we use our workflow endpoints for approvals. And all of these are, are out of the box with Power Automate. So really it's, this is exactly what you would do. You just select the workflow endpoints and then it knows what to do from there. And now it's gonna send this email. You can modify the uh, standard text if you want for what comes back to the users when it's approved or rejected. And that's our workflow. So it's fairly straightforward. You might find it a little tedious that you have to declare the company names and the APIs on uh, each step. But when you really get into working with Power Automate, you'll see that there's so many things that you can do with it and it can work across multiple environments. You can go to different Microsoft services. And so it's, uh, yeah, the, the setup is a little redundant at points, but it's all because that gives you so much flexibility and so much power. All right, so now we have this set up and ready to go. So I'm gonna come back and refresh my business central environment. And we'll see that my customer approval workflow is here and set up and enabled. And that's another thing to point out is if you are not doing best practice and not setting this up in a, a test environment first, then you wanna be aware that as soon as you save your Power Automate workflow, it's going to create and enable it in the environment. So uh, you would have to either come into here, you can open this up and disable it from here if you don't want it to be immediately enabled, or you can go to your flows and click on this ellipsis here and say turn off 
so you don't have to delete it and rewrite it. You can just turn it off. All right. So now let's see what this looks like. I have another user account set up. This is Kelly K, the account that we looked at with the approval user set up. And Kelly is going to go in and create a customer. And we already have a default template set up. So we've already got our posting groups that defaulted in here. And now I can go to request approval and send approval request. Now that approval request goes out and it's going to send an email to mod administrator up here. And then when that comes in, I will be able to look at and decide whether or not we want to approve it. And here we go. So now we see the approval request and it's requested by mod administrator. And we'll look at at the end the tips on how to change this so that you can see who the request came from. That's a common thing that is uh, asked for. And now I can come in here and approve this and say credit limit 10,000 and submit that. And now that's going to simultaneously approve it in Business Central. And then it's going to send a confirmation to Kelly with my note on the approval limit. So now we look in Kelly's box and we see that we have a credit limit of 10,000. So now the setup of the rest of the customer record can continue. Now there's really a lot of cool things that can be done in addition to that. Um, and so we want to step through some of that and look at some examples. So some solutions to some common requests we can look at if we want to see who the request came from, then here in the start of the approval, we go to advanced options and in requester here, we can now change this. Uh, you might have to scroll down to the bottom depending on uh, your instance, but you can say requested by user email down here in the dynamic content. And now when that comes through, the request will say from Kelly K, this is, this is the request. And uh, customer blocking and order locking. So you do have the ability to make changes to the records and that can this can also include automatically filling in information and that can even be on responses. So if you say yes to the approval, then you want to have it go out and add additional information. In this case, when we get the record, if we want to set it to block so it doesn't actually get used, then we just add another business central piece and we say update record. And now we can come in here and set this so that it goes back to that customer record. And we find our workflow endpoints and our workflow customers. And then we find our row ID. And then we can set blocked equal to all. And now when the request is sent, it automatically blocks the customer and so you have to go back in or you can set it to unblock automatically on your condition step. So when you're down here, if you want to execute action, you can uh, you can modify the record again and you can unblock it. Otherwise, it's up to the user to go in and unblock it after that's set. So there's a lot of things that you can do here. You can you can update records, you can add records, delete them from from different tables that are uh, natively available out of the box. There's quite a lot of options. So it's all dependent on what you're looking for. And if you need and you have a very complex workflow, then you can modify, create a new API for a new table if you uh, want to do something that's not in the default set of APIs. Now, another 
request is people ask, well, I want to have this blocked even if there is no request, because as soon as the record's created, it hasn't been approved, that actually has to be modified back here in Business Central. So if I come to my Power Automate workflow and you want to block this as soon as the record is created, you come into the event, we have to disable it first, and then we go to our first event and we say when customer is changed. So if, like you saw where we have a template created, if you have any kind of default value like that, then you can come in and set your condition and say when a customer record is changed and then whatever that default that you're using is. So the general business posting group, for example, when that's changed, then you want it to be blocked. And so that's how you can change that. So as soon as the records are being created, they're immediately being blocked. One thing that doesn't do is it, it doesn't create any permission around the user that prevents them from unblocking it. So it's if you're very worried about the user going in and, and doing something they're not supposed to be doing, then you have to go even an additional step and you could do something like create a, a power app that looks at the customer record and it's basically a custom uh, customer record screen where the user can't see the blocked field and you can either hide that in the setup or you can use a power app. Uh, my colleague has created a great video on how to do that. So if you search for Archer Point, how to start using power apps, um, you can see how to create an app that's the customer record and you are in control of those fields if uh, you know, you really want a very isolated, locked down methodology for that. And that gets into our, our last piece here, using customer approvals with other, other limits. So sometimes you need multiple workflows in place. For example, this customer approval workflow will lock it down, but then you can also use that in combination with the sales document approval workflow and say, hey, if the customer doesn't have a, if the customer has a credit limit that's um, anything below a certain amount, or if it's zero, then you can't have the order created uh, and you have to send those out for approval. That will, for, that's another additional step. So sometimes depending on the amount of controls you need, you might have to use multiple workflows and go from there. All right, I hope this demonstration has been uh, useful. And if you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment or get in touch with Archer Point and we will do our best to answer your questions. Thank you. Thank you for watching this Archer Point video. Stay in the know with the latest on Microsoft Dynamics by subscribing to our channel. You can also learn more from our blog at archerpoint.com or email info at archerpoint.com to contact us. See you in the next video.